Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I'm Jill with Go English Coach, and we are going to be talking about present perfect tense. And we're going to look at those with um, since and for. The present perfect is used with since and for to describe a situation that began in the past and continues to the present. So let's, I like these little charts, okay? Here's now or today, okay? Here's the past and here's the future. So when we have present perfect that we use with since and for, we are using this to describe or um, to describe something that started in the past and continues today. So started here and continues all the way into today and possibly will continue into the future, right? Let's back up just a little bit. If you guys remember how we form this, this form, the present perfect. Remember, I like, I like to use my formulas, okay? So my formula for this would be subject plus the form of has or have plus, so we've got subject, the form of have or has, and then what is this called? Do you guys remember what that form of the word is called? It's called the participle, okay? And we did this in a bunch of classes. So a participle sometimes looks just like the past tense with the ed form, but a lot of the times it looks like this, where these are both, they're both irregular forms. So you really do have to practice the participles, okay? So this is your participle here, known and been, okay? So let's look at some examples. Here we go. So number one, we have, I have known him for six years. When we discuss the things, you know, using for and since, um, we have different kind of circumstances when we can use for and since. So let's look at the, the two examples we have here with since. I have known him since 1995. I have known him since 1995, and we have been friends since 2013. So what do we notice about when we use for and when we use since? Because if you think about it, it's pretty similar, right? We It's kind of describing a period of time. Um, you're describing that it started in the past and you are still friends today. So we use for. So here we're talking about we used for. And then our, our time clause here is six years or 20 years. Or we can say anything like that. Um, but what I want you to notice is that it's a period of time. For is used to describe a period of time, okay? So we're saying a period of time is six years, 20 years. You could say, I have known him for a long time. So it's not specific, but if I say it's a long time, it's a period of time that begins and ends, but it hasn't ended yet, okay? So we use for when we're talking about a period of time. We can use since to discuss a point in time. If you notice, both of these have like specific time periods. So I have known him since 1995. We have been friends since 2013, okay? We could also, instead of dates, you could say I've known him since yesterday. Um, I've known him since January. Well, here, this is actually, this is a good example. So this is what I wanted to say, but I wanted to introduce this. So it says, since can introduce a time clause with a simple past. So I could say, I have been friends, we have been friends since I was little. That's a point in time in the past. One point in time in the past, okay? I have known him since I was 30. That's one point in time. We have been friends since I was in college. We use this one a lot because many people my age, in the United States at least, went to college 
right? And we meet a lot of people in college and it, it, there's, you know, people in your all of your classes and you're there for four years. So you meet a lot of people um, and then you become friends with a lot of people. So, um, so, so that is how we can use since and for. And then it is, like I said, I have known him since I was 30. So this is that simple past kind of time clause. And a clause is just a part of the sentence that gives you more information, okay? We call that a clause. How do we make contractions with the present perfect tense? Okay, so we make contractions like this. So what are the contractions? So I, we've got our pronouns, right? I, you, she, he, it, and then we and they, okay? Those are our pronouns, or in this case, we'd also, they would be our subjects, okay? So we have our pronouns or subjects here. Next, we need has or have. So let's put the correct forms of the verb to have in with the subject. So I, you, she, he, it, they, or we and they. I have. You have, he, she, and it has, great. Um, we have and they have, okay? So I have, you have, she has, he has, it has, and we have, and then they have, okay? Great. Now let's combine those and make the contractions. I have goes to I've. I've, you have, goes to, you've, you've, um, he, see, okay, let's just do all these, she's, he's, it's, okay, we, let's see, we've, and they've. Now, so what's tricky about she's and he's and it's, what's tricky about that, you guys? So these contractions can be two things, one or two. It can be she is or she has. Okay, same here. He is or he has. It is or it has. But you guys probably already know that. And then, um, yes, so contractions can be tricky. And the reason, the way that you're going to know if you're referring to she is, he is, or he has, she has, is by having this part here. If there's a participle, then you're using the pap, the the present perfect, okay? So let's look at the pronunciation for these. So if you've been coming to the pronunciation and fluency class, this should be just a no-brainer for you because we're working on all of these sounds. Okay, so I've, if we use the international phonetic alphabet is I've, I've. So you've, let's do y. Oo-v, you've, okay, you. This is the y, oo, and v. She. So we make this is the s h sound. Sh. E's with a z sound at the end. She's. She's. Okay. He's. E's. Okay. And it's. It's is not eats. Okay, it's not eats. E, I, E, I. This is I, it's, it's, it's. And this one has an S sound. Now you're probably like, well, that doesn't make sense. The other two sounds are Z sounds. Watch the pronunciation and fluency class and you will understand why that is. Okay. Weave, what? E, b, weave, 
and the they they they've. So we've got the we know our we've got our formula here. Okay, we've got our contractions. Now we know how to properly pronounce them. 